Yo, what's up, guys? Teacher Paul here, and Philip. Hello there, everyone. And today we are watching this video of why is Singapore so rich? In fact, Singapore is one of the richest countries in the world. And wow. Yeah. Nice. It, and it's, I think it's the top 10 currency also. One Ooh. of the top 10 currencies. So if you're from Singapore, let us know your thoughts on this topic. We're going to go straight to the video. This is from CNBC. So if you want to watch the full video, link is in the description. Let's check this out. Let's Singapore go. is a tiny country. So tiny, you can drive across the island in just an hour. Despite really? its size and lack of natural resources, Singapore's 5.6 million people enjoy one of the highest average incomes in the world, ahead of countries like Germany, France, and Japan. Ahead so, how did this little island of get Germany. so rich? Wait, just pause right there. Isn't Germany the second... The Germany is the second most powerful economy in Europe? And Singapore is ahead of Germany? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's ahead of Germany and even Japan. Wow. You, you guys are killing it. Amazing. That's impressive. That's, okay. that's, that's really impressive. Okay, let's keep shout going. Shout out to you guys from Singapore. Because, Sh wow. Yeah, shout out to Singapore. I'm curious to know why is Singapore so rich? Okay, let's find out. Singapore doesn't have resources like coal or oil. But it does have something countries can't buy. Location. The island sits in the middle of an important trade route connecting ah. Asia to Europe. That's a key reason why the British decided back in 1819 to set up a colony in Singapore. Location isn't everything though. There are several countries nearby that could have made use of their whereabouts, but they weren't quite as successful. That's because there are other ingredients that go into this crazy rich Singapore recipe. I'm at the Raffles Hotel, which is one of the most prominent icons of Singapore's colonial history. Unlike some of its neighbors, which wanted to separate themselves from their colonial histories, Singapore kept close ties with Britain, even wow. after independence in 1965. That decision announced to the rest of the world that Singapore was open for business. That's important because we know now that exports help to grow and expand an economy. But back then, it oh, the internet wasn't conventional wisdom. Just Singapore, pause and go Hong back. Kong, your Taiwan, internet and South Korea became known as the four. Yeah, your internet just froze. Sorry. Is it, to grow and expand is it working an now? Yes. But back then, it wasn't conventional wisdom. Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea became known as the four Asian tigers which have grown Ooh. rapidly since the 1960s. Their rise oh, was fueled by exports, industrialization, and more crucially, big doses of government intervention. This was especially true for Singapore. Labor strikes were common on the island in the 1960s, even with high unemployment. On top of that, there was a housing crisis, with Singapore being home to one of the largest slum settlements in the world. So how do you build a more disciplined labor force to attract investment? Well, you give them something to work for, like a house of their own, which is why one of the first Singapore government agencies set up was focused on building affordable public housing. While just 9% of the population lived in public housing in the 1960s, that figure is at more than 80% today. Add in greater employer rights, and strikes became extremely rare. At the same time, the government attracted foreign investment through tax incentives, growing the economy and easing unemployment, which fell from an estimated 14% in 1959 to 4.5% in the 1970s. Ice. By the 1980s, Singapore was a regional manufacturing hub, and it was the world's biggest producer of hard disk drives. But today, manufacturing makes up only about 20% of Singapore's GDP. Take a look at Singapore's growth in GDP. You can see two big surges, one beginning in the late 80s and another at the start of the new millennium. Ironically, Singapore has a downturn to thank for that. You see, in 1985, Singapore went into its first post-independence recession, prompting the government to introduce new measures. State-owned companies like telecommunications were privatized to make them more competitive. Then, at the turn of the century, service industries like finance and insurance were further liberalized. That openness helped to grow the share of services from just 24% of GDP in 1985 
to more than 70% in 2017. Multinational companies began to set up regional headquarters in Singapore. That attracted even bigger players, boosting Singapore's attractiveness to corporates and in turn its GDP. Now, Singapore is ranked as one of the world's easiest places to do business. Singapore Back has been place. praised for transforming itself from a developing to Yo, developing let's open economy. A business in Singapore. But do most Singaporeans <laughs> feel rich? Well, not exactly. Two of the most important reasons? the high cost of living and inequality. For five years in a row, Singapore has been named the world's most expensive city, ahead of New York and London. That's largely because of taxes on cars, making Singapore the most expensive place in the world to buy and run an automobile. Oh wait, it's pause the right there. most expensive place on earth. I, yeah, sure. I, I teach English as um, um, mm -hmm. with, with like for people who want to do IELTS and the, the IELTS exam, one of the IELTS exam actually had one of the articles talking about Singapore and how they were tackling um, mm. the, the cars and, and traffic and tra traffic yeah. jam. And one of the things that they did was they put the prices really, really up high. So um, most of the people can't buy a car. So that eases traffic and they have exceptionally great public transport so everyone uses public transport or bikes so correct oh, me if i'm wrong that, that's nice. what i read from so the cool. yeah that was a, at least that was a topic on the ielts exam okay let's go okay to buy clothes but personal care household goods huh. and domestic help in singapore tend to be less expensive than in other major cities while Singapore is rich in terms of GDP per capita, the median monthly salary is $3,270. That doesn't sound too bad, but about 20% of that goes into a mandatory savings account. Mandatory that savings account, that's, bills, that's housing, smart. Housing and education. Wow, mandatory savings. That's restrict savings. the purchasing that's power of the population. You've probably heard of the movie Crazy Rich Asians, which was set here yes. in Singapore. And it's no wonder because Singapore has about 184,000 millionaires, making it truly the land of the crazy rich. 147,000. Singapore also has a fairly high rate of inequality compared with other developed countries. Let's look at the Gini coefficient, which is a scale used to calculate inequality with zero being the most equal and one being the least. Singapore's Gini coefficient, after accounting for taxes and transfers, was 0.356 in 2017. That was worse than countries like the United Kingdom, Japan, Korea, and Germany. Although it fared better than some, like the United States. Is but that it's number still really a first world bad? country, right? That so. question had books like this flying off the shelves. A think tank ignited public debate on the divide in social classes after it found that on average, Singaporeans who live in public housing have fewer than one friend who lives in private housing. The government has called the issue of inequality a national priority, but it remains to be seen if it is a problem that can be tackled effectively. So beautiful. No, Hi everyone, it's Sinan. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out more of our videos, click here and here. As always, feel free to leave any suggestions for future videos in our comment section. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Okay, go check it out. Um, so inequality is a big issue. The way um, London is tackling it is um, mm -hmm. higher taxes on, on income. The higher wages, the higher taxes you pay. There, there are like brackets, 20% for a certain bracket, 40% another bracket, and 45% the, the most rich. I don't know if that's the same tax bracket um, in, in Singapore, but it's crazy that there, there is, there, did you catch that? There are like 5.4 million people in Singapore. And a hundred and fifty so thousand are millionaires. That's a high percentage of the population. Yeah, yeah well, indeed. Although and, and I do believe there are people living under the poverty line as well. I do believe every country has that. Yeah, of course, of course. There's <laughs> poverty and the rich people in every country. But the thing is that this country they uh, managed to find a way to um, like have. To, to, they found a way to deal with the inequality problem mm -hmm. that many countries have to face and they fail a lot on solving 
in solving that type of problems. And bro, did uh, you see that that mandatory savings? I believe that some people don't like it or don't appreciate it as much as um, you know because oh I, I, the money I, I need the money now right but it's yeah. a, it, it's for your own good like it it's basically money that will save you like it's you're saving for it, a rainy day what, and it's mandatory it's, 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 yeah, yeah that's probably what each person on earth should be doing with their money you know exactly yeah uh, each one of us should be actually be saving something like that or maybe 10 percent of, of the total income to have to have like a, a, a an emergency savings or something but it's interesting to see that that it's mandatory there you know oh, i love that it, it kind of reminds me of the the of the of, of the retirement sa savings that people yeah. do here in brazil like a pension kind of members yeah something like that but it seems like it's not limited to to like uh, the person getting old yeah for example yeah, and it's especially great for um, young adults, you know, people who start their first job. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, by the time they're 50 or 60, they, they have a, a solid retirement plan. And maybe that's the reason there are a lot of millionaires. Because if you think about it, if you're saving 20% of every income that you have, by the time of you're 50 or 60, you will probably be a millionaire earning... <laughs> Yeah, earning three yeah. three thousand two hundred. If you do the math there, yeah, that's like um, three hundred and twenty per year. No, sorry, not per year, per month. Exactly. Am, am I wrong? Wait, let me just quickly do some some quick math here. Twelve times, um, let's say ten years, right? That's one hundred and twenty times three hundred and twenty. Okay, that's just 40,000. <laughs> but that's in 10 years. If you, yeah, if, it's not if, enough for you to get rid to get yeah. a millionaire, but it's enough to make you to I don't know. In 50 years you, that's 192,000. But if you put that in investments, then probably, yeah. you know. Yeah, you're you're not going to be a millionaire, but you're still going to have at least 100,000. Like yeah. At least 100,000. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any requests, the link is in the description to buy me a coffee or the pinned comment, and yeah, we'll react to your favorite videos. If you're from Singapore, shout out to you guys, and let us know um, if you want us to react to more of these type of videos, tourist videos, or even singers. That's it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me A Coffee today. Find out more. The link is in the description. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right. Play the game.